As the Clone Wars came to an end and Order 66 put a stop to the Jedi Order's reign, the few remaining survivors were forced to scatter out across the galaxy to the only worlds which would take them in and not turn them over to the Empire. On one strategic Imperial manufacturing world, the Empire's vehicle factories kept coming under attack by angry locals. Darth Vader quickly realised that the locals weren't acting alone. A Jedi was among them, and one who believed he was smarter than Darth Vader and could take him down with a simple trick. So let's find out what went down. Before we dive in, make sure you're subscribed for more awesome Star Wars lore content just like this. So the story begins out on the lush and thick forest world of Otavon 12, where the Empire has built a brand new base dedicated to the construction of at, -AT walkers. There aren't many natives living here on the planet, but the few who remain still fight to drive the Imperials away from their world. Unfortunately for them, however, their attacks have grown enough to attract the vengeful gaze of Darth Vader, who senses that there may be someone leading these natives. Moving out onto the front lines, the Avoni are locked in an intense firefight with the Imperial clone troopers, who are taking things pretty casually, and coldly stating, more target practice. As they continue blasting without regard for the natives, the lines of attack eventually converge and hand-to-hand -hand combat even breaks out. The Avoni are now planning to plant blast charges on the territory of the clone troopers before retreating and taking out as many as possible, but a dark and cold presence suddenly washes over the battlefield. As one of the Avoni looks up, she also sent down her spine as she realises it's all over. Darth Vader has arrived. Igniting his bright red lightsaber, Vader leaps down from the city wall and begins an absolute rampage, slicing through every single rebel fighter he sees, some without even looking. He manages to choke anyone who comes from the front and impale anyone who comes from the back. Vader continues slicing and dicing, letting the pure rage flow through him and fuel his darkness. He's quickly snapped out of it however once the general in charge of the planet, General Crick, rushes down with more clones and warns Vader that he can't be taking these unnecessary risks. Vader however brushes off this concern, telling the general that these pathetic Avoni pose no threat to him. As the general takes him into the at, -AT factory, Vader tells him that the Avoni are a dying species and that their attacks are futile. The general doesn't really agree with this because no matter how many of them are killed, they just keep throwing themselves back at the factory, which is making all of the workers very nervous. Vader then tells him that he'll be dealing with the natives. The general's only concern are the walkers, and the emperor will not accept any delay. Following this, Vader receives a hollow call from his master and informs him that he has lost contact with the squad who were searching for the Avoni leader. Palpatine tells him that he was sent to ensure that the production of the walkers was on time, not to chase down the natives. Vader however believes that this is an utter waste of his training, but Palpatine tells him that he forgets his place. His obsession with the Jedi is clouding his judgement. With one final warning, Palpatine tells Vader that if he does not continue to oversee the production of the walkers, he may never leave Tremor base. Many days later, Vader is summoned out to the front of the base being warned that motion has been detected on the perimeter. Vader points out to the wild forest, and his general orders his clone troopers to fire at will, but Vader puts a quick halt to it. Out of the greenery walks a badly injured clone trooper with severe damage to his arm. The brave trooper collapses to the ground and in his dying breaths, he warns Lord Vader that the Avoni have a Jedi leading them. With Vader's suspicions now confirmed, he is determined to put an end to this Jedi's little game. General Crick then cries out to Vader, warning him that he should probably get back inside because of the enhanced threat, and because he's scared for his own life, but Vader won't back down. He demands that his probe droid be released and the hunt begins for this devious Jedi. As he walks off into the dark forest, Vader tells the general that Tremor Base is very well defended. He won't be in any danger, unless he fails to complete the walkers by the time he returns. Moving to the rebel base camp, their numbers have dwindled greatly and the young Jedi Padawan named Dendro is attempting to guide them in their fight against the Empire. The young Jedi survivor warns that the Dark Lord will eventually catch up to them, and before he can even finish his sentence, a shadowy figure emerges and a red blade is ignited. In an instant, the Dark Lord lunges forward and kills one of the natives, and is quickly met by the Jedi Padawan's blue blade. Darth Vader then force pushes the rest of the Avoni into nearby trees and clashes his red blade against the Padawan's saber. As the two continue the battle, the Padawan tells Vader that by surviving this long, he has already won. After a flurry of swings, Vader manages to clip the Padawan's leg, scorching through his skin and causing him to gasp out in pain. The Padawan is then knocked into the muddy ground in a very dangerous spot, and Vader demands to know what his name is. The Jedi simply tells him, Jedi, and then manages to pull Vader towards him. Vader however won't be defeated by this trickery, and instead lifts the young Padawan high up into the air ready to reveal his identity. As Vader lifts the young Jedi up by the throat, he realises that it is just a Padawan, before demanding to know where his master is. The Padawan then tells Vader that he is en route to his starship and is about to escape out into the galaxy where Vader will never find him. At this point, Vader is done bickering with the young boy and slams him into a nearby tree. Vader commends the young Padawan's resolve and strong will, but tells him that it's not strong enough, before chopping his head off Dooku style. 
On the hunt, Vader is warned by the General that if this Jedi has a starship, he must be heading to Mount Dijandi since the peak is beyond Imperial scanning range. If he launched it from there, it would never be detected. The General then tells Vader that the walkers are behind schedule because he doesn't have the same command over the workers that Vader does. Vader simply tells him that they believe the General is a coward. He then orders Crick to execute the inefficient workers and the others will double their efforts. As this is happening, Vader is ambushed by a group of the Avoni natives and manages to redirect a blast rocket away from him with just seconds to spare. This little trick manages to make the natives flee and he immediately orders his droid IK-48 to analyze the device. Before he can even get the results however, the Dark Lord is attacked by a savage wild beast, one with a hide so thick that his lightsaber can barely even dent it. Vader is then genuinely put into danger as the creature attempts to gobble up the Sith Lord, leading him to show a very rare bout of weakness, begging the creature to stop. This weakness soon turns to rage however as Vader demands the creature release him, resorting to his dark side animal bond ability to stop the foul beast. Using this dark side force ability, Vader tames the beast and uses it to scale Mount Dejandi. Moving to the peak of Mount Dejandi, the waiting Jedi Master is simply meditating and notices Vader's cold presence. He immediately says, I didn't expect you to find me so quickly. But Vader snaps back, telling him that he had help. The Master can't help but laugh at Vader's tactics, resorting to animal bond and Jedi mind tricks once his saber couldn't cut through the creature. The Master then realizes that Vader is no Jedi. Vader refuses to answer the question, instead demanding to know where the Master's starship is. The Master instead tells him that there never was a starship, but Vader should be concerned about his ride leaving without him. As Vader turns his back to see what's going on with the tamed beast, the Master leaps through the air and ignites his green blade before diving at the Sith Lord, attempting to strike him down. The two engage in a fierce showdown and the Master manages to challenge the Dark Lord, but only moments later Vader manages to slice the green saber in half, leaving the Master defenseless. While on the ground, the Master respects Vader's precision in slicing his blade, but ultimately Vader tells him that he meant to take off his whole hand, not just the saber. The Master then looks to the ground and smiles, eagerly telling Vader that he has a trick up his sleeve. He believes that he has outsmarted Vader and will take the Dark Lord down. The Master then swings out a hidden second blade, attempting to chop the arm of Darth Vader off. Surprisingly, he manages to cause some damage to Vader's mechanical arm, but Vader smiles under his mask and moves up to the Jedi Master's face. He tells him, So have I before impaling the Avoni Jedi Master through the stomach, finally putting an end to him. In his dying breaths with the saber scorch mark piercing him, the Master still can't stop laughing, but Vader demands to know his name. He tells the Dark Lord that his name is Hylon, which in the language of his people means trickster. As Master Hylon is about to collapse, Vader asks him why he came up to the top of the mountain with no hope of escape. His final words tell Vader that he should go back to the factory and his reasons will become clear. Vader then delivers one final blow to end the Master's misery. Returning back to the factory, Vader realizes that he has made a grave mistake. The beast which he thought he had tamed had escaped back to the factory and destroyed all production of the walkers and severely injured General Crick. And to end the story, Darth Vader's master, Darth Sidious, arrives, flanked by two royal guards, and is filled with anger. Vader attempts to begin explaining, but Palpatine looks out at the damage and tells Vader to meditate on his failure here today. Vader looks up at his master's ship with worry flowing through him. So that is the Jedi who thought he was smarter than Darth Vader. And maybe he just was. Thanks so much for watching, really hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers guys, hope to see you in the next one.